Hey again, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, this stuff's not supposed to be here. Yeah, that's for later. You gotta be subscribed for that. What you're really here to see is this. Um, there's a company called the M5 Stack, which does sort of uh, intercompatible ESP32 based um, devices, I guess. Um, this one here is their new M5 paper. This was provided for review from banggood.com free of charge. There are links in the description below. If you use those links to buy stuff, it actually really does support the channel. Anyways, um, some of you guys have been really bothering me to do more ESP32 stuff. Some of you MicroPython stuff. Some of you uh, M5 stack stuff. And all of this culminates in this right here. So this is kind of an expensive device, but I mean the e-paper thing and the fact that the ESP32 has native support for going um, into deep sleep in Python libraries and all sorts of things means that this thing is kind of like the perfect device to get started on. It's a little expensive, but um, I mean, you can't deny how cool it is. So let me just zoom you in. We'll go over the features real quick. So the first and most obvious thing I want to mention is this beautiful 4.7 inch e-ink display. This is not a sticker and the device is not on right now. This is the e-ink display. If you don't know um, uh, what e-ink is, I think they're little pigments of sort of uh, black paint flakes or whatever. And it uses electrostatic to kind of flip them uh, sideways or sorry, face on so you can see the black and sideways so you can see right through to the white. And what happens is when it does that, the screen persists. So if you display an image and turn it off, it'll stay that image because the, the statically charged particles will be flipped either face on or sideways depending on what you get. And this gray here is made by um, flipping one, leaving the neighbor off, flipping one and etc. So the denser that they're packed together is the blacker that it looks. So this looks phenomenal. It really looks like one of those stickers that they put onto device displays in order to make them uh, look like they have something on them. But I'm pretty sure this is this is for real. This is what's on there. Um, on the side, gonna lose focus here for sure. Uh, we've got some sort of up and down toggle. We've got a micro SD card slot. This is another thing that the M5 stack does very well, is they typically write down what all the stuff does. We've got a USB-C connection on the bottom. Very nice. We've got um, a port. I think this is their standard um, port A, port B, port C. I think that's their standard uh, wiring ports. I don't think there's anything um, different about them. So I think all the M5 stack stuff is compatible. Um, we've got... Let's see here. ESP32 with uh, 16 megs of uh, flash and 8 megs of PS RAM. We've got a the e-ink screen, 16 levels of grayscale available, 960 by 540. Pretty neat. And the screen is touchscreen as well. There's a battery in here as well. Um, there's a temperature sensor. Uh, where is the battery? There's the battery. 1150 milliamp hour uh, lithium battery with uh, built-in charging. Um, CP2104, I believe that is the USB control uh, chip. So, yeah, this thing is pretty neat. Let's try to turn it on. I'm not sure the, maybe that's the on. Oh, did the screen get brighter? I'm not sure if there's actually any juice left in here. I just received it. So I don't think it's on. Okay. Well, I mean, that's fair enough. Uh, perhaps we should uh, plug this in and see if we can get some power into it. Because, yeah, right now, it's not responding to anything. Let me plug it in. All charged up now. Um, this battery indicator here, uh, I don't know how accurate it is. I have seen some devices where you need to charge it up and then all the way down and it calibrates itself. 
not sure if that's the case here but let's turn it on so to turn it on it's this little click wheel here that goes up and down you just press it in and it should turn on so let's see if it works there we go and you can see the refresh this is how uh, ePaper refreshes has to blink a couple times to move the pixels over okay and now the only indicator that it's on there's no LED or anything as far as I can tell nope no LED or anything the only way to tell is by clicking stuff so let's hit uh, test so this is a touchscreen for sure uh, SD card failed yeah I don't have one in there uh, Wi-Fi let's see uh, there there's a Wi-Fi here uh, network here um, I don't remember my Wi-Fi password believe it or not so uh, yeah the touchpad works as you can see it's picking up the locations we've got uh, temperature and humidity temperature 19.57 humidity 30 percent is it really that oh maybe it's that hot because it was charging because it's actually like 18 degrees down here so that's pretty neat the port here there's nothing connected so I don't expect that to do anything you could just click back to home like so okay so let's see there's settings you can restart it shut it down change the language change the wallpaper Penrose triangle don't see anything different maybe you have to set it engine back to setting ah there we go yeah the display here is crystal clear I love it and as you can tell by my shop lights here the reflections aren't too bad it's actually it's very uh, matte which is really good for a paper display it also um, it, it also doesn't have a backlight so everything that you're seeing here is reflected light it's pretty neat okay go back um, let's see what else we got we have compare I don't know what that does okay it just shows you the sort of uh, contrast okay we have storage that'll bring us to the SD card there's no, no SD card but yeah you can see SD slash up here very Android-y go back home um, there's a game I'm not sure how a game will play because the refresh rate of a uh, e-paper display is very slow uh, I'm not sure Am I supposed to do something here? Maybe scroll up and down? No? Hmm. Not sure I quite understand this game, to be honest with you. Okay, go back home. This is pretty nuts that it's just running on an ESP. Um, there's the battery indicator, 61%. Obviously, the more you do with it, the uh, faster it'll drain. But, um, I mean, it is what it is. It is an e-paper display. So you can have something display something, let's say once every minute or once every five minutes or ten minutes, and then have the ESP go to sleep. I'm going to have to do different things to this uh, to test the duration of the battery and... The sleep modes but first I gotta learn uh, micro Python or circuit Python and then I will get back to you in different videos there we go the m5 paper now here is a feature or a, a problem with the e-paper I don't know if you can see but do you guys see ghosting do you guys see the the other lines let's see if I can zoom you in here Can you guys see the faint lines of the previous image on there? You can see right there. So an e-paper display often has that kind of ghosting. And that's simply because you have to refresh the screen quite a few times before it'll go away. You have to like flash it black and then back to white. That's what you see on the transitions there. 
So didn't understand that. What's in the home here? Oh yeah, so home is a demo on like smart controllers. So if you have smart home devices connected, you can um, have these icons and you can turn on and off the uh, plugs, the lights. I guess this is the, yeah, the temperature. There you go, 26C, you can turn it up or down. This is kind of what I have in mind for this. Uh, since it's e-paper, I want it to display something like temperature data from outside and from inside and just have it on the display. And we'll see how often I'll have to charge this, but my hope is that I charge it once a week or, you know, even longer than that, once a month maybe. We'll have to see what the power is like because it is a thousand milliamp hour battery. And even I wouldn't be so opposed as to take this case apart and put a bigger battery in it and sit it in a different case. Because this case doesn't look that hard to open up. See these, these holes here? I'll probably try to open it up in this video to see what's inside. Whoops, I accidentally clicked the life gain. But yeah, the touchscreen is pretty responsive. It's not like uh, Android or Apple or anything, but uh, it does seem to work. Uh, it's not as fast. It's not as fast as it could be, obviously. Um, this thing is not exactly made for fast refreshing and real-time operation. It's really made for, well, they were designed for e-readers. So you have a page, you read it, you get to the end, you flip the page, etc. Let's see if we can break into this thing. As you can see now, this thing is totally off, but the display is still displaying as is the e-paper is supposed to work. I have a selection of spudgers here. I'm going to try to get into this. This is a fairly expensive device. I'm hoping that I don't break the case. But, I mean, if it saves you from breaking yours, I'm kind of okay with that. I'm kind of thinking we might need to go inside and release the clips here. pretty well put together. Might have to force it open on the the seams like here for example where the SD card slot is. Oh there we go. One of the clips have released. That usually means the end is near. Because once you have a little bit of a hold you can kind of stretch it open. There we go. I'm glad they don't glue these things together. It's not out of the realm of possibility. That's going to be a little hard here, jumping the gap between the, the hole here. Mm hmm. Oh, there we go. That open. Don't want to force on the USB connector. I don't want to break it off. This is hard because they put a clip right next to the opening here in the gap. Oh, there we go. It is off. Okay. Uh, first things first, there is something here that seems like a magnet. It is a magnet. Okay, got a magnet here. We've got our special little click wheel here. Up and down and push in. We've got an 1150 milliamp hour battery, um, like stated. And if it wasn't for this sort of groove here, if it wasn't for that, I think you could fit a bigger battery in there. That's interesting. Um, we've got here a sort of molded button on the case right here and that goes to this button here. We've got our card SD card slot. We've got a flex cable here. So these two flat flexes seem to be coming from up top. 
I believe one will be, I think one will be the screen, the other one will be the touch interface. Got a whole bunch of chippies here. Where's our ESP32? It might be just under here. It's actually right here. There's our ESP32 chip right there. It is an ESP32. I guess it would be this part number here. DOWDQ6V3. Yeah, it's too small to read, but it does look like that. USB-C up here are three M5 style connectors there. That looks like an antenna. So the Wi-Fi antenna will be like here-ish. That's good to know. You don't want any metal over here. But yeah, this is cool. This is a tiny little board and is so densely packed with components. That's really impressive. Just trying to get you a closer look at the board. There's the ESP right there. So this, the ESP is a small portion of this big product, but I guess if you have a 4.7 inch uh, LCD or e-paper display, you have a lot more room to put extra stuff. And that's why this thing did end up with a lot of cool stuff like the USB-C connector, this, uh, this really cool uh, clicky wheel thing here, and the SD card slot, which is really interesting. So yeah, I can't wait to have a play with this thing. And it's gone back together without a hitch. Let me just see if it still turns on. That might be the sketchy part, but I'm pretty sure it will. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Uh, battery percentage, nice. And so that's it. This is the quick first look at this thing. Um, I'm not going to film all my development development with this thing um, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of trial and error and uh, you really don't want to see that. Um, oh, unless my patrons want to see that. If my patrons want to see some sort of uh, me toying with this, um, let me know in the comments below. But other than that, um, leave your ideas for projects with this. Um, and especially if you've got code that will just run on this and display some of its cool functionality, uh, let me know where I can find that because I'd really like to peruse um, people who know what they're doing's code and see if I can get something going on this. But yeah, that's it for today. Check the link in the description if you want to get your own. It does help the channel a lot. And I want to thank you guys all for watching.